Hi everyone, here's the Becomics once again, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about Clark Ashton Smith, one of the great classic horror authors of the 20th century, of the early 20th century, and one of the best writers to emerge from pulp fiction in the history of the genre. Clark Ashton Smith was a good friend of H.P. Lovecraft, and he wrote a beautiful, heartbreaking poem to H.P. Lovecraft after the latter's death. And he, uh, in this edition, in the Penguin Classics edition edited by T.S. Yoshi, you get notes to each of the stories detailing how the two of them basically wrote to each other saying, oh, I loved your story, it was so good, I'm, I'm, I'm shit, but you're great. And the other was like, oh, no, I like yours better. And uh, I, I totally ship the bromance between HP and CAS. They're, they're amazing. Uh, but in general, he is similar to Lovecraft, and of course he contributed to the whole Cthulhu um, mythos and to the whole canon of Lovecraft's deities with Satogwa, who is one of the coolest out there, but he is, in several other ways, is very different from H.P. H.P. Lovecraft's production is more varied than people giving credit for, but see, uh, Clark Aston Smith wrote in basically each, every genre, every genre in pulp fiction. He wrote psychological uh, horror stories, he wrote straight-up supernatural horror stories, he wrote science fiction, amazing science fiction, he wrote fantasy tales, sword, both sword and sorcery, adventurous fantasies, all kinds of, um, like, fantasy tales. Uh, which are probably among his best works, even though at times they are uh, they feel a little bit uh, over the top. That is because much more than H.P. Lovecraft, uh, Clark Ashton Smith was an unapologetic escapist, and he wrote he believed that the function of writing should be to elevate people from you know the everyday concerns and the limitations of reality, and you know bring them to a higher state. Of being and that's why he wrote all these sprawling narratives about these imaginary worlds people by horrid monsters and beautiful princesses and all kinds of uh, wizards and magicians uh, you know um, and dealing with the devil and uh, brewing all sorts of potions and uh, it, it was his way of creating these alternatives to reality and these beautiful fantasies which are both dark messed up but decadent for sure, lots of decadence in his stories, but beautiful, ultimately. One of the key things about Smith's production is that there is a very strong note of sensuality and even sexuality in it that is completely absent from his friend Lovecraft's. Lovecraft's works are very cold, for better or for worse, and that is why he is so good at discussing, you know, how meaningless human beings are in a vast and crazy cosmos. Smith's stories, on the other hand, even when they deal with, you know, faraway jungles people by snake monsters, or with crazy magicians building vast labyrinths to guard their prisoners from their potential saviors, even in these cases they always deal with very relatable human issues, and with people being either greedy or horny, or in in any way interested in indulging in the pleasures of the senses. And there's a story in uh, The Dark Eidolon about a guy who is literally suffocated by the huge boobs of a toad witch, and if that's not the kind of story that gets you into the Library of America, I'm not sure what will, seriously. I mentioned throughout this video that Smith published in the pulp, and that's true for most of his career, but he was also a poet and a quite a successful poet too, and he wrote beautiful, dark, decadent poetry that you should definitely check out. He was also quite successful, as I said, although he probably came a little bit too late for his own good. He was often compared to the romantics and decadent poets of Europe, whereas at the time he himself was writing the next big thing were people like Ezra Pound. You know, fuck that shit, but at the time it was all the rage. All the rage might misrepresent the popularity of modernist poetry, but whatever. Uh, still, Smith himself, even if he published in the pulps, thought of himself as a as an artist, as someone who created beautiful things, and, didn't, uh, and had to compromise his stories, and sometimes had to edit them in order to make them shorter or faster, or to make the plot more, uh, you know, thrilling for pulp publication because of monetary concerns. Unlike his friend H.P. Lovecraft, 
who could afford the possibility, I mean, he really couldn't, but decided to afford the possibility to never compromise his stories because, uh, you know, the plebe wanted easier tales to read, Smith had to do that. That, I'm not going to say that is not necessarily a bad thing, the fact that Smith had to compromise his stories, but I will say this, if Smith's stories have a flow, have flows at times, they mostly have to do with the fact that they feel a little bit self-indulgent, that they feel like uh, Smith is indulging in, you know, describing these fantasy worlds and peopling them with more, uh, more and more descriptions of unknown pleasures and hidden possibilities, and at times that feels uh, a little bit too much and you'd be interested in a little bit more action, but that's just me being a complete idiot. If you're interested in evocative fiction, if you like the works of Lord Dunsany, if you like the works of people like Arthur Macken or Algernon Blackfoot, if you like H.P. Lovecraft, do read Clark Ashton Smith, if you like horror, if you like great literature in general. Let me know about your favorite short stories by this literary god, and let me know about your experience with Smith's production. Thank you so much for watching once again, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.